Hello! Welcome to another edition of Clint's Vlog from the Bar. Let's get started, shall we? Hey, check it out. We're in a bar! Not just any bar, but the Vaudeville Muse in downtown Des Moines, Iowa! Oh, I got lots planned for you tonight. Sunday night, you're probably going to be seeing this on Monday night. First off, I'd like to talk about some constructive criticism that I received this week. I like to start out with that. Let's see, this guy comes up to me, uh, he orders a drink, and then he says, you know, I saw your vlog. I said, oh, yeah? He goes, yeah, I didn't like it. I'll probably never watch another one again, so. No, and I said, I, of course, I said, why didn't you like it? And he gave me a number of reasons, and he said, well, it feels so rehearsed, so memorized. Yeah, I got cue cards all the way over there, right? <laughs> so, you know what? This reminds me of a story. Hang on a second. What's this we have here? Huh. A wrapped up dictionary. <laughs> this story is about ecstasy. Well, uh, I was in Prague doing a Rolling Rock commercial actually. I remember, this is what kind of sucked, is they, they wanted me to have long hair, and I had pretty short hair at this time. It was like, this is like 98, 99. And uh, so I w went to this wig guy, it was a chick, I think, wig guy, to get them extensions on my hair, and it just was not working out. And then I was taking a flight uh, the next day to Prague, okay? So I'm like freaking out. What am I going to do? The director's going to be pissed off. I don't have long hair. I'm playing this like rock singer. And so, uh, yeah, so she just goes, uh, what about a wig? And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, give me a wig. So she gives me this long wig. So I'm like, okay, I got to get in character. I'm going to wear this wig on the plane. So I, I get on the plane, and I'm wearing the stupid fucking, excuse the language, stupid long wig. It's brown, you know, it kind of looks like my hair. So I'm like uncomfortable the whole time. You know, I can't be on the flight with a long hair with a wig and then take it off halfway through. They're going to think I'm like a terrorist or something. So anyway, I kept this on. I'm freaking going in the bathroom, you know, itching my head. So I get to Prague, whatever. I take it off. And uh, so I get on set the first day and he's like, what happened, dude? You're not wearing that wig. It looks like shit. So I said, okay, okay, well, hey, man, I can be a rock star with short hair. Okay, no problem. I am a rock star, shaved head or not. Hear me? So anyway, we shoot it. I'm like this rock star. It was kind of cool. We actually wrote a song on set and something about being, I can't remember it. Anyway, so we get it done, and I actually I'm singing, I'm singing in this Rolling Rock commercial, and then this guy is drinking this Rolling Rock in the audience, and so I just stage dive. And there was like probably 60, 70 extras there, and I stage dive, and I, I crawl my way over this guy, and I take his rolling rock, and I, I go to take a sip, and then he grabs it from me, and then everybody laughs, and, and then the party keeps on going. Brilliant, brilliant commercial. Somebody told me they saw that commercial in Prague or something, or in Paris at a movie or something like that. I mean, there's Clint. So anyway, getting to the ecstasy part, went to a party later that night, and uh, you know I'm not a, I was never a big drug guy, but I meet this casting director, and we're at this party. I'm in Prague, you know, when in Prague, so she's like, "Oh, I have these pills. You want to take a pill?" And I'm like, "Yeah, what the hell? I can't believe I'm telling you this. I'm taking drugs." But I take this pill, and she says it's ecstasy, and I'm like, "Okay." So we go in the bathroom, we pop this pill, and 
let me tell you something. I walked walked the streets of Prague, the cobblestone streets of Prague that night, and it was incredible. I tell you. And, baby, don't tell anybody, but I got laid. Anyway, that's my ecstasy story. There you go. Like it, not like it. What? What? Too, too memorized? Too rehearsed? Kiss my ass, mother. Anyway, let's see. On to the next thing. Okay, I'm going to do some tips, some bar tips. Not bar tits. I'm not going to show you my tits. I'm going to give you some bar tips. First off, now this is a no-brainer. Most of you know this, and I'm just going to tell people, maybe there's like 5% of the world that don't know this, but when you're ordering a drink, okay, when you're ordering a drink, always say the liquor before the mixer. Liquor before the mixer. Vodka cranberry, gin and tonic, Jack and Coke, liquor mixer, not the other way around. Can I get a cranberry juice and vodka? No, no, no. Can I get a orange juice and gin? It's confusing for the bartender. You know why? Because it's like, do you want an orange juice and then a shot of vodka on the side? So please do me a favor. The only, there's only one exception to this rule, and that's Red Bull vodka. And you can do vodka Red Bull or Red Bull vodka. But hey, why not do vodka Red Bull and it'd be crystal clear. Liquor before mixer, remember that. Second one, you know, for the life of me, I looked around the bar here and I could not find a koozie. So I have a koozie in my hand. Imagine that. Guy comes up to the bar and says, can I get a PBR for my koozie? Well, what do you do as the bartender for a koozie? Let me give you a little tip. Don't, I mean, you're supposed to, legally, you're supposed to open up every bottle, every can, you know, for the customer before you give it to them. But when they got a koozie, listen to me, guys. This is what you do. You don't open it. Hey, you can even go the extra mile and grab that koozie from them, put it in. But don't open the beer before you put in the koozie or you're going to be like you know trying to get that condom on you know and it's 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 pain it's pain so just just don't don't break it out don't click that just slide it right in there you got it in the koozie and crack so you know what i don't like the other bar tip wait till next time i'll have more bar tips for you okay so hey listen i'm going to do something new today I'm going to give the weekend wrap-up of what went down at the Vaudeville Muse. Who played? I'm going to give you a little brief. Now, if I don't mention your band, I'm sorry. I loved you. I mean, I was back here in tears how good you were. But listen, I only got a limited amount of time, so I am mean, just, I, I love you. You were great. You were phenomenal. So, Friday night, early show, Black Diamond, Teenagers, 16, 17-year-old teenagers, and they rocked the mother-sucking house, okay? I wrote a blog post about it. It's two guys wearing ACDC T-shirts on stage at the same time. The drummer, the guitarist was wearing ACDC T-shirts, and they were the same ones, back in black, black T-shirts, white lettering. Come on, guys, get your shit together. Next gig, talk to each other. Don't wear the same T-shirt. Okay, but they were good. Check them out. I think they're from Carroll, Iowa. Uh, late show, we had my boys Easy Fruit in the house. We got Brad Turk, Joe Horn, Chris, and Tomas. They did a great job. Always love seeing them. They're a pretty new band. Uh, they just started about a year ago. I work with the bass player, Joe Horn. If you want to see a bass player that has his back to the audience the whole time, you get to look at his, his dirty ass jean jacket the entire show but other than that if you love that maybe you want to see the bass player with his back turned i don't know okay whatever whatever suits you so uh check them out easy fruit they just came out with a tv uh, a tv yes a tv they came out with a new tape you know that's all that all the hipsters do they put out the tapes but there's a download card and then uh, you know all that crap so check them out saturday early we had a new uh band uh uh, Ryan Steer, I think that's his last name, Ryan, talented guy. He has a new band called Extra Vision. And there was like eight, nine people up on stage. They're sick. Uh, they got the Rao brothers up there, Luke, amazing drummer. 
They got they had a, a, a saxophone player. Vocals were great. Really liked a couple of their songs. I think they could be hits. So look out for them. Oh, well, let's see here. Late show we had Canyons. My boy Gabe Cordova. You kicked ass, buddy. It was funny. Uh, I go over to our booker, Lad Aslan, and I tell him, I'm like, uh, did you bring the heroin tonight? Because <laughs> their music, it sounds like, shoot some heroin, listen to the Canyons. And then, like five minutes later, there was mention, because the bass player, Nat, who actually works here, was sitting on his ass on his bass amp. And some guy was like, what are you, on heroin or something? So I thought that was a serendipitous moment. So check out Canyons. We had Dr. Dentist, who is one of my favorite bands. We got Brad Turk. We have, uh, uh, I want to say Cameron. What the hell is his name? Shit. Thomas. His first name's Thomas, but he goes by, I'm blanking here. Sorry, bud. You know who you are. You're phenomenal. I love you. I'm going to come up with it before the end of this damn vlog. Okay, he's awesome. He works at High V. He's the manager of High V. I know all about him. He's incredible. Check out Dr. Dentist, one of my favorite bands. And uh, the headliner was Mike Adams. I actually watched his video all the way through online. Check him out. It's Mike Adams and his honest weight. Sunday, I just got done with a metal show. You know, to be honest with you, I'm not a big metal fan, okay? It's actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't metal. I asked the door person, I'm like, what is this genre? And he says, it's hardcore. So <laughs> for you kids out there, hardcore. It was kind of on the pop tip, some of it. Guy actually mentioned the big G-O-D in the sky at the end, so they might have been on a little Christian tip. Who knows? Hey, that's cool. Whatever you want, do the sign of the cross, baby. Uh, it, up to you. But uh, you know what? The one thing that stuck out, I was sitting over there in the chair, not a lot of drinkers. I think there were straight-edge kids in the house, pouring a lot of water, wasn't too happy about it, made like $2 on tips tonight. But hey, 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 what can you do? I did great this weekend, so forget about it. So I'm sitting over there, and this guy comes up. He's, the, he's a drummer because he's got these heads, these drum heads. And he's like, he throws it in, and then he's got, he, I think there was two, and he had these two boxes. They're real flat. They fit a drum head. And he stands there for literally three minutes, and he's like folding up the, folding up the boxes. And he just does it like this. Kind of like this, he's folding up in this little square, and he gets done with it, and then he puts it in the trash. And I'm like, dude, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate that. I did. He was awesome. They were like the nicest guys. This other guy came from, I watched him. He was all the way across the room, comes to the end of the bar to throw his uh, piece of gum, shoot piece of gum into the trash can. Who does that, you know? Thank you so much for that. You guys are great guys. So that was our weekend roundup. You like that? Anyway, let's do uh, some bar stories that happened this week, shall we? Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm going to get a sip of water if you don't mind. Okay, this first story is called 12 Ounce Can. Guy comes up midway through the show, has a PBR can in his hand. It's a tall boy. Says, do you guys have 12-ounce cans in this? I say, I can crack open a tall boy can, pour some, some of it out. You know, because there's like 16 ounces, and he's wanting 12 ounces. So I was just thinking I could crack that open. Unless he had a koozie. Then we'd wait. Then we'd put it in the koozie, crack it open, pour like... Say, let's do the math, three ounces, pour three ounces out, and then give it to him. Yeah, there's your 12-ounce PBR. <laughs> Hope you love it. Anyway, second story was, is called, is, was, is called, how was your New Year's? Guy comes up to the bar. I know him. Really good guy. Orders the same thing every time, PBR. I don't think I've actually heard him say much else, PBR. That's the extent of it. I've got time to shoot it. I ask him, how was your New Year's? He shrugs his shoulder, says, cops came. Next story. This is one of those that, you know, 
piss Clint off. That's one of those. So settle down in your seat and here it goes. It's called, Is the Gray Goose Watered Down? I'm behind the bar. It's somewhat busy. I'm helping someone. My fellow bartender is helping a group of guys. One of the guys asks, Do you guys water down your Gray Goose? I hear some clubs do that. What the hell is this guy talking about? My fellow bartender tells him, no, we do not. I get back to making my drinks. A minute later, I notice the guys have their drinks. The guy that asked about the gray goose takes a sip of his drink, then says to his pals, yeah, yeah, this is watered down. I stop what I'm doing right then and yell, it's not watered down. I just opened the bottle five minutes ago. He stops, looks surprised that I heard him, puts his head down, and takes another sip of his gray goose. This last story I got for you happened at Martini Night. Check out Martini Night down at the lift. I work at this other bar, the lift. It's just down the street, downtown Des Moines, 2124 Street. It's on Wednesday nights. Make a shit ton of martinis. If you like a deal on martinis, it's two for one martinis. Check it out. This story is called, How Are the Sluts? Two cute girls at the bar, a blonde and an Asian girl. I go to them, I say, have you decided yet? They're looking at the martini menu. The blonde says, I think we'll have two pineapple sluts. I say, sure thing, coming right up. I make the pineapple sluts. We have another slut martini called a mango slut. They've been on the menu for years, and the ladies love the sluts. I get done, set them in front of them. They start tabs. I go help another customer. It gets slow, only about eight people sitting at the bar. I go up to the girl and say, how are the sluts? The Asian girl says, great, great. Then I say, how are the drinks? That's it for Clint's vlog from the bar. Number five, baby. Hope you liked it in the new place, Vaudeville Muse. Check us out. If for some reason you're on YouTube and you're seeing this, well, check out my blog. It's fromthebar.me. I'm here every Friday through Sunday, so come see me. Criticize me, love me, hate me. I got nothing else. Bye. Bye. I'm going to go down in the wine cellar. Hang on a second. See ya. <laughs>